All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're gonna to talk about a very special fig. It's a very highly anticipated fig that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. And I've had a lot of high hopes for this particular fig because it's supposed to be one of the hardiest figs in, uh, in existence, actually. I would love to plant this one out front in my hardiness experiment. I think I just might after this video, perhaps, after we observe this variety a bit more this season. It's called St. Martin, by the way. And so that's kind of the story behind this, at least, in that there's a well-respected grower that says at least the information behind this is that it can survive below zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I don't remember exactly what the temperature is, but it's something ridiculous. Uh, this would be something that, if it were true, could do well unprotected actually in like a 6B, which is unheard of. Uh, really hardy Chicago for the most part is really the only fig that in my mind so far can do well in a 7A unprotected. We have had this year a lot of figs unprotected this, this season in the ground. We did a giant hardiness experiment of like 100 plus varieties and quite a few actually were rather hardy. But we had a, only a low this year of, of six degrees Fahrenheit. And so while a lot of them did survive six, six is rather different than zero. And certainly zero is rather different than negative five degrees Fahrenheit, which I think this one is boasted to at least be able to be hardy to that. I think uh, Campaneri is boasted to be uh, able to survive negative four degrees Fahrenheit which uh, <clears throat> I have not seen any indications of that just yet uh, from anybody other than the person who found the variety. But nonetheless, this definitely has got good a good chance. I don't see why someone would kind of lie about that. Regardless, I think even if it doesn't survive those super low temperatures, it's got to be a very hardy fig. And so well worth trialing this in a colder place. Uh, this is an air layer that I had removed from my mother's St. Martin tree. And it's grown rather nicely. It took a while early in the season actually to set fruits because it was just digging itself in as an air layer does after you remove it from the mother tree, uh, which I did at the uh, at dormancy last year. And then overwintered it in this five gallon pot. And then now the beginning of this season, it, it just took a while to get going, but after it did, it really took off and it's really now quite productive uh, as this variety typically is just insanely productive, I have noted. Um, but here's the caveat in that I don't think this variety really qu requires a ton of light to actually set those fruit buds. Uh, which is rather interesting. Microphone there, guys. Hopefully uh, you guys can still hear me. Let me just do a check. Yeah, you guys can hear me. Okay, good. So that's a weird little thing here in that if the variety requires a lot less light to set those fruit buds, you would imagine, well, it's going to be very productive. That's, that's my indicator personally of determining of whether or not a fig is productive or is more productive than another uh, just based on that simple fact. And it's got some pretty good basis behind it. But um, what I also find with this particular fig that we mentioned actually only five days ago in a video that we did, which I think is about how long it took for this to ripen. The hang time is only about five days. And maybe the susceptibility window is even shorter than that. So th this has got a nice hang time to it. But what we mentioned five days ago in our video about light and fruit drop, we said that some varieties like this St. Martin here, uh, like Celeste and also Pastelier, they have a pretty good history of dropping figs for people. And I, my theory for that uh, fruit drop that people see is just a lack of light. And so when I have my St. Martin over here in the ground with the rest of my trees planted so densely and so close together and they grow so vigorously, they'll set a lot of fruit as St. Martin does every year. It always sets a huge amount of main crop. And, uh, because it doesn't need a lot to, a light to set those fruit buds, but as it continues to grow, and because everything's so densely packed in there, 
the amount of light reaching the fruits down lower on the canopy where all those fruits were, were to begin with is non-existent. There is just almost total shade. And so when you have a lot of shade on these fruits, like often happens with Celeste and Pastelier and, and this variety as well, the fruits will just drop. So when the fruits drop like that, you know, you have to wonder, well, is there something else going on? Is it, is it uh, a Smyrna? Is it not common? Is it partially, partially parthenocarpic? And I, I just don't think those theories have any clout to them at all. There was a thread um, on our figs a few years ago about my St. Martin and people, uh, my friend Raphael, who's really one of the best fig growers there is. Uh, seriously, I trust him and his taste buds more than probably anybody else. And so Raphael um, told me that this variety is not supposed to produce Breva. So there was a big controversy because my variety did produce Breva. It was dropping main crop for many years and people thought it just wasn't the real St. Martin. And I said, no, it produced Breva. It is a real deal. You know, I don't know how it could be the wrong thing. You know, um, I actually got my cuttings from Raphael, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, no, I didn't actually. I got, I got my cuttings from Brian. Brian Melton. And then Brian actually contacted me after that and tried to make it up to me. But I was still convinced, even though Brian thought he messed up, I was still convinced that there, this was totally fine, that there was no issue. Uh, and, but Brian went out of his way anyway to actually replace the tree. And I have one of them in the ground in the front. I forgot about that. I do have one in the ground in the front. So it is part of the hardiness experiment that we're doing up there. Uh, and that one did survive the winter time. I forgot about that. Um, unprotected, six degree Fahrenheit low. But the point is though, is that this thing is still, it is the real deal. This is the real St. Martin. And the only reason it was dropping fruits is because of a lack of light. So I'm glad we got to clear that up in that video five or so days ago, at least at the time of filming, it was five days ago. Uh, and then of course, <clears throat> the whole debate about the Breva thing is also just really a weak argument because, you know, the whole debate between a Unifera variety and a Bifera variety is just wrong. Like, Smith's supposed to be Unifera, but my Smith trees produced 20 Breva this year. You know, uh, some people have ripened plenty of Breva on varieties that are really not supposed to produce Breva, but they do anyway. And so there's something else going on there biologically. There's just something that's not really right when it comes to, you know, that whole argument. And so as a result, not only myself, but also another grower uh, that received cuttings from a different source also produced Breva on his St. Martin. And so the variety can produce Breva. Is it supposed to? It's not supposed to, but it does. And, you know, it also here in my, in my yard is ripening figs without any pollination. So. There's the whole big history of this fig. And uh, the only thing I'm kind of concerned with now at this point, because we've recognized a lot of other things about this fig over the years. We also just now realize that the hang time is rather good. We realize that the shape of the fig is great. It's hanging down. It's got a nice oval slender shape. The stem length is rather long. It's a winner, man. But we have to taste it. This is the first one I'm going to taste off of my main crop. And then this is also, we have to observe it, by the way, in terms of the rain. How is the skin going to behave in terms of the rain? So I'm very, very confident in this variety, but let's see it. It definitely could use more time. Oh, but that looks great. <clears throat> Maybe I should have let it ripen a little bit longer. This is exactly what St. Martin should look like. You could see that. On the inside, the acnes are a bit interesting on this variety. They have um, weird, long, oddly shaped female flower parts in there. So you can kind of see that. It's almost like all the little female flower parts are kind of like these little dots, little dimples. And you can see those white flower parts in there, obviously, but very different than other varieties I've noted. 
So anyway, let me try this now. Been a bit under the weather here with uh, some sinus problems, but uh, let's taste it. There's a little bit of sap at the top, so definitely not perfectly ripe. That's a shame. Huh. Needs more time, but it, it te to me, it seems like it's gonna have a great berry flavor. Rather than just being a figgy or fig, this to me seems like it actually has a, a nicer berry flavor to it. But we have to wait and see, unfortunately. I don't, I don't have all the details, I think. We have to really wait. Oh man, that really stinks. Because I was very much so looking forward to eating this. Um, but we got plenty of more fruits here that will ripen. At least two more will ripen before frost. Three more will ripen. And these up here, I'm not sure uh, when they formed. So I don't know if they'll ripen in time, but at least three of them, <clears throat> I imagine will ripen and we'll get a better idea of the fruit quality and hopefully the rain. I should have probably just left that one on. It's gonna rain tonight. And we would have probably observed at that point what the fruit would have uh, looked like. But I was so concerned with ripening it uh, as a main crop and just confirming that um, 